The Boston Celtics strike first. They take game one in the NBA Finals, 107 to 89 over the Dallas Mavericks. They were up by 17 coming out of the first quarter and never really looked back. The Mavericks did go on a really nice run there in the third quarter. I think they cut what was a 25 plus, plus point lead all the way down to about eight or nine points. And then immediately the Celtics responded. And it was a full on team effort from Boston in this game where the leading scorer for the Celtics was Jalen Brown with just 22 points. You saw Derek White, Drew Holiday, Jason Tatum, uh, Porzingis, and Jalen Brown all in double, double figures in this one. Porzingis came out guns blazing, had a phenomenal first half. He was very, very visible with his impact on the defensive side of the ball as well. Not just the three blocks, but you can just clearly tell his rim deterrence was huge for the Celtics and something that I mentioned that they – definitely would love to have back if he was able to come back at any point during this postseason and it was on full display here in game one of the NBA finals um, Celtics players continue to test him at the rim he continued to be a strong presence down there on top of the fact that they continue to do a lot of heavy switching on the Dallas side of things with left Chris out with a lot of very favorable matchups against smaller players where he was able to post up face up shoot right over the top of a lot of these guys um, and knocked down 8 of 13 from the field, 2 of 4 from 3. Um, an absolutely great finals debut from Chris Stapps for Zingas. Um, Jalen Brown was everywhere on the court for the Boston Celtics tonight. Like I said, leading score for them, 22 points to go along with 6 rebounds, 2 assists, 3 steals, 3 blocks. And all of these blocks are at the rim. He's stuffing dunks. He's stuffing layups. He just brought the intensity on that side of the ball tonight on top of the fact that he continues to be one of the best shot makers in the NBA. Um, I think, again, a lot of the conversation coming out of this game, I think it's stupid, but it's still going to be about the fact that he seemed to outshine Tatum in this one. But I, I really wish the conversation would be shifted to the fact that we've seen Jalen Brown grow continuously throughout each year of his career in the NBA to the point where he is just such a well-rounded player on both sides of the ball. There's very little flaws in his game. He was very aggressive at getting downhill while also being great from the mid-range. Can be a catch-up, uh, excuse me, a catch-and-shoot guy, knock down two threes in this one. And then obviously on the defensive side of the ball, um, he can play out on the perimeter. He can be a help defender. We saw some flashes of the rim protection tonight. He's active in the passing lanes. He's active as an on-ball defender looking to get steals. He ripped up Luka, uh, I think, once or twice in this game as well. Um, he just is such a complete basketball player. And I wish the narrative would be more around his growth and ascension to this point than less about Tatum being a guy who's just taking a back seat or isn't the number one on this team. Because the end of the, at the end of the day, the reality is, and I think part of it, is also growth on Tatum's part, is he understands that he doesn't have to force the issue with a roster that's this stacked. He takes 16 shots. He has 16 points. He brings 11 rebounds. He was great on the glass all game. Um, I think he's the best playmaker for Boston tonight. Only finished with five assists. You could argue probably could have had, you know, four or five more, a lot of great easy dump off passes and kick out threes that just didn't fall um, for Boston off of his passes, but he, <clears throat> excuse me, in the series um, already just in game one, he continues to do, do such a great job of getting two feet in the paint, kicking out and getting into those drive and kick ball rotation scenarios that the Celtics love with all of those three pointers that they shoot. Um, so again, 16 points, 11 rebounds, five assists, isn't the stat line that's going to wow people, but from an impact perspective, Jason Tatum still played a very good uh, basketball game for Boston. And again, I think it just goes to show that he doesn't, he understands that he doesn't need to force the issue with this team. Because when you have Porzingis coming off the bench in 21 minutes, giving you 20 points with six rebounds and three blocks, with Derek White and Drew Holiday doing what they're doing, with Al Horford being able to knock down a couple of threes as well. And obviously, like I mentioned, the, the performance that Jalen Brown gave, you don't have to go above and beyond. Just play within the flow of your team. There will come a point and runs in this series where Jason Tatum is going to be that guy. I fully believe that that's going to come. It wasn't needed in this game, and he didn't force that issue. So kudos to the Boston Celtics, a full, full team effort. Transitioning over to the Dallas side of things, um, 
You saw Luca finish with a 30-point double-double, 10 rebounds. The story of the game for the Dallas Mavericks, nine assists in this game. Jason Kidd said at halftime that he felt like their team was playing too much iso ball, um, and they just never really were able to get in a rhythm offensively as a unit. Um, like I said, Luca was able to, to knock down some, some shots. Kyrie had a stretch there in the third where he was able to get a couple, but for the most part, he struggled um, pretty big in this one. He finishes up six of 19 from the field. He not, he missed, excuse me, some shots that um, I think Kyrie would, would definitely make uh, more often than not some open looks from three um, some, some finishes in the in-between game that I'm sure he would like back. Um, he's going to have to play better for the Mavericks to have a chance in this series. I, I think if you watch the podcast, you saw that me and Dane both said, for the Mavericks to win, it's going to have to be on the backs of Luka and Kyrie. And, and you're getting, you know, 30 from Luka, 30-point double-double. Ky Kyrie has to show up in these games. Um, don't want to overreact, and I want other people to overreact. I'm not overreacting. It's game one of the finals. It's always the fill-out game. Boston is the home team. The home team wins significantly more game ones than the away team does. The series is far, far from over. The slightest areas of concern that I can point to for Dallas right now, like I mentioned earlier, is A, they didn't seem to have great answers for Chris Apps, obviously because uh, they were doing a lot of switching in this one. Derek Lively got into foul trouble. He finished his night up um, in 18 minutes. He was able to rack up five fouls, and it felt like three or four of them came in like a four or five minute span there in the third quarter. Um, only two points, five rebounds. Again, with the lack of assists, the, the lobs were not there um, for the Mavericks like they have been throughout the entirety of this postseason. Um, something to continue to look forward to. I mentioned that on the preview episode that we did for the finals that the Celtics may look to try to really take away those alley-oop passes, um, and they did a very good job of that here in game one. Again, trying to play off of that dunker spot, recovering off of the roll, doing whatever it can to not make it be a lob. There were even times where, you know, Drew Holiday is getting switched on to Lively or Gafford, and Luka or Kyrie is just trying to dump it down to him, and, and they just are denying the lob opportunity. They want them to catch and bring the ball down on the deck and have to be a playmaker from there. Different things will have to be tried here from Jason Kidd on the offensive side of things. Um, to try to get a rhythm because for uh, context sake, again, nine assists just in game one, their lowest assist total game as a team in the Western Conference Finals against uh, the Minnesota Timberwolves was 19. And that was in the game five where you had Luka and Kyrie playing that ISO ball, but going off, both going off for 36 points, um, getting their own shot off at all three levels. And they still had 19 assist as a team in that one. Um, so to not even hit double digits in game one um, is, is not a good look early. But again, I'm not concerned. You have the best player in the series in Luka Doncic. There will be a response. Even if they don't win game two, this series is still far from over because of the level of talent that Luka and Kyrie bring to the table, the shot making that they bring. And again, the Celtics had one of those nights where they shot, you know, 38% from three. Um, that probably dipped down a little bit as you got towards the end of the game once both teams pulled their starters. Um, but there was a point in the game where they were shooting plus 40% from the three-point line. The Celtics are always going to be a hard team to beat when they're knocking it down from uh, behind the arc at that type of clip. So with that, I am still super, super excited for game two on Sunday. Um, the biggest things I'm going to be looking for in game two um, like I mentioned, I know there will be a time for Jason Tatum to have to make that run. It's going to come sooner rather than later because we saw Luka and Kyrie go on their own individual type runs in that third quarter. Um, Luka, for a longer stretch of the game, really started to feel himself. You saw him try to, you know, me mug to the crowd, um, knock down some tough shots there. Like I said, cutting the lead to single digits after being down by 25 plus. Jason Tatum, I think, is going to get it going in game two. I expect to see that from him. Regardless of the fact that he didn't shoot it great, I think he did a great job with his aggression of getting downhill. If I'm Jason Kidd on the flip side, I'm getting in Derek Lively's ear and I'm saying, I love the aggressiveness that you played with on the defensive end. I need you to just dial it back a touch because I think their offense is so much more dynamic when he's on the floor. And additionally, I think that um, 
He is the most active and versatile big that they have. Um, I just like what he brings over Gafford a little bit. Obviously, Gafford is a little bit of a bigger body, um, but but I really love what, what Lively Bing brings on both sides of the floor for the Mavericks. So he needs to find a way to stay out of foul trouble. Um, so again, I, I love the aggressiveness that he played with, but again, he's got to go up vertically. He's got to try to stay clean because Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum were getting downhill and able to draw a couple of easy fouls off of him there. Um, but yeah, like I said, excited for game two in this series. Continue to stay tuned to the channel. If you like this content, like, comment, subscribe, and get ready for game two on Sunday. Thank you.